you solve this problem by modifying it to a single carrier FDMA. So now we want to understand what is meant by the single carrier FDMA and what is the difference between OFDMA and single carrier FDMA. Okay, as you know, for upgrading, the only component they need to add into the transmitter or in the receiver is the DFT, discrete power transport. Here, the LTE, of course, still they provide this modulation for uplink. Because uplink from user, you can see, depend on the category of your UE. You have five category, okay? And then uh, I think only category five or UE can support all. Category one to category four, they only up to sixteen four. Downlink, of course, it will support up to 64 pump. DFT is applied here. The basic DST is applied before it go to the sub-carrier mapping. Because here is just to transform it into the frequency domain. Okay. Okay, so, so sub-carrier mapping allows flexible allocation of signal to sub-carrier. Which means in the OMDM, every sub-carrier one symbol. Yes. So uh, in, in OFDM, every sub carrier is one symbol. But in the single carrier FDMA, uh, sub carrier can contain many symbols. But they spread out over a, a number of sub carrier. That's why they call a single carrier. Right? So to, with this, they can overcome the effect of. Big, big API. Okay, so those are why. <laughs> so sub carrier mapping and flexible allocation above uh, to an uh, available sub carrier. So, but they still have IFT and so they still have a cyclic profit in insertion there to overcome the intersymbol interference effects. So each sub carrier carry only a portion of the symbols. Uh, that's why we call it. Sometimes we call this as pre-coded OFDM. That's why you, you before you put, you use all of them you do, do a pre-coding to spread out the symbol into different sub carrier. This is the difference. Uh, you see that the single carrier only at this at the transmitter and at the receiver. DFT component. But the component here, if you compare this and the OFDM, they are similar. So the additional component that extra here to spread out the symbol into different sub carrier is by using this DFT. So that is the difference. Or we can see in other way that in OFDM, each sub carrier carries only one specific symbol. <coughs> that you see different color in different sub symbols. There are different. Uh, this is one symbol, this is another symbol, and so on. Right? But in the single carrier FDMA, the sub carrier contain all the transmitted symbols. So, if you can see every sub carrier, they have number of uh, symbols. And those symbols are spread out into a number of sub carrier. So that's why I think in uh, OF uh, single carrier, they have to be adjacent. Because they have to combine a number of sub carrier together and the number of sub carrier have a same symbols spread out within that sub carrier that's why they call a single carrier but they, the sub carrier is still there the multi carrier concept is still there the only thing they spread the symbols within this number of sub carrier okay to reduce that so those these are the difference huh? you can see that uh, OFDM and single carrier FDMA or we also call DFT uh, or FDMA for the sub carrier instead of having multiple sub carrier they are changed to a single carrier because we can see the whole sub carrier that carry the same, same symbol are single carrier even they, they still have the sub carrier within that so we can uh, think like this you have a uh, serial data coming we change to the barrel 
go to FFT, then go to the IFFT. From there, we map over the different sub carrier. So what we see here, this these are different sub carrier, but those. Mm -hmm. two, so, uh, can you re elaborate the part that you used? So, can you re elaborate okay, or the problem that you say uh, with the uh, single carrier, okay, uh, uh, single carrier OPM, okay, when compared with the uh, OPM, you say that the, uh, it is more vulnerable to the uh, Frequent selective fading. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, to me, okay, because you actually spread information into uh, different sub carriers. So, our, uh, uh, from my point of view, it is actually more robust okay, to the frequent selective fading because you actually spread the information. Yeah, yeah. So, if you have a big nut in one particular uh, sub carrier, then you have still have information okay, beside in, our, our, uh, in other sub carriers to so recover. Yeah. Okay, I think if we, we refer back to the uh, two different for FDM and for FDMB uh, single carrier, okay, it should be here. Okay, we're looking to this and this. Okay, for this one, basically, uh, this one symbol, one sub carrier, they're independent of the other yeah. sub carrier. So the selective feeding normally they occur uh, over white white band. They they, they might at a, at one frequency there may be no fading but the other frequency they may be have fading. So they will be slowly you no know, across the frequency mm -hmm. uh, channel. And uh, if this happened in OFDM it is because this will be affected. This is uh, this is not affected. This will be affected where you can do uh, error correction within that and so on. But uh, if you are re referring to the OFDM because they are they consider this like a single carrier, mm -hmm. like one one channel. The other one we you know the channel is narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, this 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 is channel is wider because the combination of a number of sub carrier. So selective fading happen in one single channel. That oh. means it can be from there, it can reduce like that. So this is a, a more effect compared if the it happened to here. Because it's easy to you to do correction in a narrow band than in the white band. So so that it, it take example like a WCDB, why why WCDB have a problem, you need to have equalizer because WCDMA of course a wider band they go up to 5 megahertz so that is one maybe disadvantage but not so critical uh, still, still can be managed by the equation <coughs> but but you compare like this is a wide band, this is a narrow band the fading will because fading can be across that, can be high and low and so on. So if you if you across the channel you have different fading that are more <coughs> difficult than you have uh, one channel only affected. So that that is the, the one reason I think. Okay. Next nice question. Yeah. Oh, professor, I have a question. Uh, as we know, uh, in LTE there are uh, sometimes they provide many many kind of choices, such as uh, for cyclic prefix they have normal cyclic prefix and extended cyclic prefix. So uh, I think uh, how how about if we uh, for a lower mobility area we can use a narrower sub carrier band, and for a high mobility area. Maybe we can provide uh, 15 kHz subcarrier uh, and then uh, in the low mobility area, uh, a narrower uh, subcarrier can provide more 
higher uh, or higher data speed. So is it possible? So what, what you say is that the sub carriers will be different. Yes. Uh, uh, different sub yeah. 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 Is it possible? I think not possible because they have to be standardized. Uh -huh. They are the one. All because if you have your device like this, the channel has to be standardized. If you have 15, you have to apply to all because you cannot, no? Uh, because, they, they, because they have to comply to the standard. They have to come up with what is the optimum best spacing for the sub carrier and they have to <coughs> apply all. So it is not possible because otherwise your, you cannot have your standardized device. Huh? But it should be 15 is standard. That's why when you go to LTE M1, still 15. Even they require big data rate, a uh, high data rate. Still 15, you cannot change. Uh, bandwidth also will be the same, the same. The only thing that they can do, they can aggregate. But the, the specification is the same, like GSM. GSM, channel 200 kHz. All have to pop the 200 kHz. Eight times long. It is fixed. Otherwise, it will be uh, proprietary. You can do that. It become proprietary. No, no, no comfortable. No, no, no. Then that will be very difficult. That is not the standard. That is not what uh, I, uh, the global. No, you can have uh, Motorola, for example, uh, Ericsson, Huawei. They can have their own different, but they are not comfortable. That's why they have to be standardized. 3 GPP coordinate all those things. But 3 GPP is being uh, proposed by ITU to take care of that. So that's why they have to, they, they're not possible. Even it's a good, good idea to have different no. But if you do that, then become proprietary. They have to be follow some. That's why they have to ensure what is the best option, what is the optimum. 15 kilohertz is the, the when you go to future, because LTE, that's why they call long term. Might be they're looking to more, no? So LTE, LTE advance, maybe they are looking release, increasing the releases. Now release 10, when they, they are release 11, 12, and so on. They call release uh, LTE A, LTE B, future LTE C, and all those. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, commercially, that might be. They can say 5G or and so on, but the, the G means doesn't make doesn't means anything. No, no, because supposed to be 3G is okay. I think ITU accept IMT 2000 is 3G, but when it come to 4G should be LTE advanced, not LTE. Because LTE should be specified. The next is 4G, but along the way YMAX coming to be declared 4G. So the LTE also. Come and now they got 4G, so it become just uh, not the good thing, not, not the red energy. Then when LTA one coming, what they want to call? Supposed to be 4G because that will be the next one. IMT 2000, the next MTA one. You just improve, but have you seen in my first day that now they decided anything improvement from the original they can so be accepted and 4G. But now that's why all the need they call 4G. Because eh? uh, in our country, when they introduced WiMAX 80-60D mobile WiMAX, I think similar to what you have here in Taiwan, the operator promote as a 4G. And then now LTE come in. If you say also 4G, so the customer, the people, what is, what is the difference? They don't know. <laughs> so uh, now operator were operating that they what they call 4G LTE. They mentioned that 4G LTE. <laughs> this to appreciate. Otherwise, the people who don't understand the technology, what they, what was the difference? So if they already have the 4G from YMAX. What is the difference brain? <laughs> yeah, so the third is this. Uh, the, that's why in LTE, once they, they, they find the thing that they just add on. Huh? That's why I think it's not of, because of the standard. Huh? But before they decide that any parameter, they have to ensure that they are, should be long term. 
So LTE, they are thinking long term. The name also explain that. I think that's why the, the best update they decided LTE to be used huh? because it can exit for quite some time. Okay? So only they add a new version enhance. You see when we see this afternoon maybe I will explain what is LTE advanced have, what the features. Basically this enhancement. Right? You, you 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 still use 20 megahertz but you aggregate because you need more bandwidth for high speed. Okay? You enhance further IC IC intercarrier interference. Yeah? They they call E I C I C they enhance further. They enhance me more from four <coughs> by four we go at the eight by eight. I think I will show you this afternoon there are uh, uh, 3DPP have considering two. Either to increase the modulation level or to increase the memo. But finally they found out they have to increase uh, memo from 4x4 to 8x8 rather than increase the modulation. They are looking into 2000 something com. But maybe very, the channel condition not allow that. So they decided that 4x4 is uh, eight by eight is the thing that to go for the high speed. But future we don't know. Maybe uh, the processing, the technology is capable to do error correction, overcome that. They might go to two thousand quam. So that's that possible. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next talk. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, I, I will. I will continue to the next question. Okay.